Church check in, man. Church check in, man. Man, uh, I want to show uh, gratitude and appreciation to everybody, man, who be ride with me. You know what I'm saying? Been sending emails. You know what I'm saying? Showing concerns. You know what I'm saying? Took a little hiatus. You know, I'm, I'm human. Um, I'm human, and um, you know, as a human being. It's kind of hard to, you know what I'm saying, smile when you're going through shit in real life, you know, personal things, and, um, family things as well, um, you know, and sometimes taking that, that time off to get some clarity so you can come back strong, you know what I'm saying, um, and come back. with a better focus and an outlook on what your purpose is, you know, uh, I had to do that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I still, you know, um, I know I have an obligation to y'all because we've been riding, we've been doing this for years and I just want to thank y'all for not giving up on me. Now I had, um, I had planned a lot of exciting things, uh, you know, when I was like, yo, I'm going to come back. I'm, I got a lot of exciting things. I wanted to, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm a fun loving type of motherfucker. You know, I, I love, I love to bring good energy. I like to make people laugh and we're going to have a good time. But, <sighs> When shit like this happens, it's my job as a black man, uh, especially a black man with a platform, um, to make sure that I address real issues along with the same BS that's going on in the community, you know? Um... And, you know, I feel like I'll be doing a disservice to not talk about something that's so real, you know, um, that's going on with us as black men, what we got to go through, you know what I'm saying? Black people, what we got to go through and just real, just, just day to day shit. I love to give y'all strategy guidance on how to move around. Like I told y'all. When I came up with the theory that the free thinking straight black man is under attack, I meant that shit. I meant that shit because nobody is going to protect you as a free thinking straight black man. I want you to notice you have no allies, man. The only people who going to have your back is of a free thinking straight black man and we are rare. We are extremely rare, you know. Um, most of our women don't have our back. The system don't have our back. Old niggas don't have our back. You know, mother-raised males typically don't have our back. You know. And I always ride for my hardworking, my blue collar brothers, my white collar brothers too. Brothers who, 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 who conduct themselves properly in society, work hard to feed their families, you know, Stay out of the way and stay out of trouble. I try to give y'all practical guidance that I know that my father gave me. And my father was tough on me, even though it was situations where it was clearly not my fault. He would find a way to make it my fault. You know what I'm saying? And Because he would say, he'd say it was something you could have did 
to avoid this, whole, this situation entire, entirely. So I've always been hard on myself and on black folks. But this situation really, really, really let me down. You know, and this is a this was a big L for black men. And I feel betrayed because these are the men that I ride for, that I preach, that I preach for, that I that I have y'all back. When nobody had y'all back, free free thinking straight black men, hard working black men. I'm the voice for y'all, and then y'all go do this. Now I look like an idiot. So I gotta take that. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take that. That 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 yeah, Jeff, I told you so. I can't defend it. And putting me in a position with the sacrifice that we, that we do here at the church. Four black men, black voices, free thinking, straight black men who stay out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? Who's supposed to be pillars of the community, some something that men can look up to. I gotta look like a fucking idiot because the the very same men. That I tell brothers, hey man, we need more brothers like this, man. We need more brothers like this. And then they go and do this shit. I gotta hold the L. That that I gotta I gotta hold the L defending you motherfuckers. Cause I seen the good that a lot of these men do in the police force. But now, now, you niggas gave these people, most of them ignorant, you gave them what they been telling the world. That all you motherfuckers is against black men. Black people. And you only made the climate worse between authorities and the people. Now every situation will be perceived as to be hostile. So I gotta hold the L. Because y'all brutalized and killed a working man. Unjustifiably. Unjustifiably killed a hard working man. Now, you know me, I, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat or nothing like that. Because it's going to be people, remember when Jeff said this? Remember when Jeff said that? I got it, man. Because in most cases, niggas don't know how to act. This wasn't the case. Matter of fact, it is the case. It was just the niggas with the authority who didn't know how to act. You know, the niggas with the authority, when they finally give you a position to make the difference, this is what you niggas do. This is what you niggas do. Now, this is no George Floyd situation. I'm still standing by what I say with that George Floyd shit because 
we did the most for one of our worst. We did the most for one of our worst. A man on the scene of a crime just committed a crime and high, high, high out of his mind. This ain't that. This ain't that. This is what y'all said it was. See, this Tyree Nichols situation is what y'all try to make George Floyd situation be. And when the George Floyd situation was debatable, you niggas came in and said, no, nah, let's put another situation together that's not debatable. This is not debatable. You know? Two unarmed men, but the conduct in the in in the in in the the chemicals was two different different situations, man. Today's topic is the betrayal of black cops. Now you would think that you will have a ally in black cops. And I and, I, and for the most part I champion black men becoming cops because the biggest the biggest argument that everybody has is that we got these white cops kicking our ass. We got these white cops all through our neighborhood. And who knows how to deal with black people like black people. So you would think that these men, you know what I'm saying, would want to reform brothers. Even if brothers is in the wrong, they going to still show you some type of courtesy. You know what I'm saying? And not do you dirty like the perception of the white cops. But what these cops just did was give white cops a good name. And this is a I told you so moment. Told you you niggas don't love each other. Told you you niggas can't stay on 30 cold. Told you you niggas don't have a brotherhood. Now, I'm I, now the disappointment comes from the aggression that these black men have for another black man. Off top. And it really should be an eye opener for a lot of black men that, man, maybe we need to tone it down with each other. Why do we as black men hate each other more than the white men that say hate us? You know? We're doing it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves on every level. Every time we get in positions of power, we make it our business to do harm, whether it's in the corporate world, you know what I'm saying, the workforce, we make sure to harm the next man. Everything we doing is trying to be better than the next man. Trying to be little the next man. In fact, we don't feel good unless the next man feels bad. That's your average black man. But see, as the free thinking straight black man, we don't think like that. 
And sometimes I check myself now. I'm not saying love your enemies or anything like that. But you don't have to go that far. This was a win for the black woman. The ones that's on, online talking shit about us all the time, this is a win for them. Oh yeah, you niggas ain't shit. All y'all do is wanna, wanna kill each other. Black, they, they are salvating right now in their Facebook groups. They are going crazy on their little panels about the black man. And we just gave them footage and fuel to that fire. We can try to blame everybody we want. But at the end of the day, these were men, men of men. So I can't blame single mothers. I'm not going to lie. You know, maybe those cops were mother raised males. Okay. But now you're a man amongst men. You know? And now you got the opportunity to actually change this generational curse of the broken family and stuff like having that type of position of power in the community and influence where kids look up to you, where you know old ladies are protected by you. Now you you you, you know that's the that's the role of men, protection. You know? And for you to take that for granted, for ego, or to um, um, appease your boss or whatever, or just to use your own people as a practicing punching bag, I can't ride with that. I can't ride with that. These guys made it harder for all black male cops, black cops, period. Cops, period. They created more tension than ever before. Every situation we see, whether it's, some, it's just some regular BS, there's good cops out there. There are good cops out there, man. You know what I'm saying? But these niggas just made their lives harder. You know? I always tell y'all, man, comply with the cops, man. Be smooth. You know? Give them no problems. Say less. Make sure you ride and clean. But then when I say that, a nigga can always counter that argument and say, what about the four, the four cops that killed Tyree Nichols? You don't give me a leg to stand on. These niggas actually just made it seem hopeless to have peace amongst the people and the police. So now it's going to be a lot of crazy shit going on. This is warranted for protests. 
I, I don't think we can survive another George Floyd riot. Black people have got to be careful with white people protesting side by side with this because their hearts can't, are not truly in this. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. The Mexican community, their hearts are not going to be in this. If there's an opportunity to break in the Foot Locker, they'll be there. There'll be no sincerity and no other race of people but us when it comes to this situation because this is some shit we did to us. Other folks stepping into this shit with, with, with the fake passion from Starbucks, watch them. Watch them. Black man, watch the black woman with a microphone. The only black woman that needs to be speaking on the Tyree Nichols situation loud is his mother, maybe his baby mother, if he has a sister, family. None of you motherfuckers need to be having a microphone. None of these black women need to be having a microphone. It, sit your black woman activist ass down. Because shit's getting real. You could not, you could not endure the pain that that man de dealt with. And that's what us allowing you to talk is what the, bro the brothers on the, on the front line for real are going to have to deal with. I suggest you stay home and stay clear of this situation. Because last time this happened, black women incited more violence. Unnecessary shit. And they was not prepared for the consequences of those words. Black women are not ready for an ass whooping. Please, please put the bullhorn down. Do not have the motherfucking women out there marching. Do not have the women out there marching. I, I understand their hearts are in it, but us as men, we have got to silence them because they just talking. And definitely appreciate the support. You know, you wanting to ride, but you're not going to be able to ride. You cannot, because you do not, black women do not want to want to endure what going up against law enforcement really would be like. Please don't get your life taken because you're not the warriors. Don't let Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram posts hype you up to grab a bullhorn and start playing with the police. Because when you get your ass fucked up, you're going to be looking at us. That Black Lives Matter shit, where the hell are y'all? Them three hoes, out of sight and out of mind. Ducked off. Black lives don't matter when a black man do it though. Y'all women stick to Twitter, stick to Facebook, stick to the panels. Don't get out there marching and get your ass fucked up and fucked over. Because I'm telling you, that brother survived for three days. 
off that beating from them four cops. You ain't going to survive three minutes. Three minutes. Please. Please stop hyping yourself up like you're a warrior. But this ain't about y'all. I just want y'all to stand clear. And know your place. Because if it ever went down and we have to go out there and get it on with them people, you're not going to be able to get down with us. You don't train for combat. You don't train for terrain. You don't have those type of skills. That's not something you was thinking about. So wear a t-shirt, support, and hashtag to death. But when the blood gets spilled, we don't want it to be you. These four cops have just made your life more hard, black man. Because now, if you live in the black community, some of these people talking this shit don't even live in the black community. I live in Chicago, the heart of Chicago, own property in Chicago. My city still has not recovered from what the George Floyd riots has done. This, if this situation turns into a George Floyd situation. My city is going to turn into Gary, Indiana. We going to be the next Gary, Indiana, the next Detroit. You ever heard of Devil's Night in Detroit? We just run around burning people's shit up. But we do it to ourselves. That's what I said with the George Floyd shit. A black man died by a white man. We go burn up black shit. Black man died by a black man. Y'all ready to burn up black shit with white folks with you. If you didn't learn from that, from that, from, from, from the George Floyd riots, the agitators and the instigators were these, were these three groups of people. Women. Immigrants, white people, marching and fighting and throwing shit for a cause that ain't y'all's. You motherfuckers gonna stop being uh, uh, recreational revolutionaries. So y'all gonna go out there at the fool and go live and take selfies. And after y'all tear all our shit up, the people who gotta live there gotta suffer. There's no pharmacies in my community. We gotta go far. So the little old ladies that stay next door she got a she got a call the CTA or the pace bus 
for the disabled van and go fucking 25 fucking blocks, four, five miles just to go get a diabetic medicine. Because we tore up our own shit. So while they was hashtagging, you know, doing a do, bullhorning, like they going to do something, the old ladies got to suffer. The whole community got to suffer. Stop letting these people agitate a situation. I watched the Starbuckers come through, you know, skateboards and lattes come through, tear up the black community like it was the purge and go back to the north side of Chicago like nothing happened go right back to Starbucks and get back on Wi-Fi this is what the distractions are these extra agitators the rock throwers Now, watching this tape. Oh! The whole teppers. I always, always got smoke for the whole teppers in the, in, the, in the African diaspora. What do you call them? Pan African melanated. Where's all this righteousness? Where's all this ingrained righteousness? I told y'all black folks did it to ourselves. We were sold over here by black folks. You can't blame the white man for this. Where's all the 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 the, the, the nature of the black man? Is a righteous black man. He don't even when he got when his job is to protect black people. He act like this. Where's all it? See. You got all these educated fools with smoke for white people, but then this happened. You're gonna turn, you're gonna turn a blind out of this. I'm telling you that all black problems are behavior based. You can't blame Trump now. See, if, if, if Trump was in office, black folks, old niggas, especially black women, would be finding some way to tie this to Trump. They was Trump supporters. I guarantee you they wasn't Trump supporters. Cause the cause the district that they in the, the the ward that they in in Memphis that's a Democratic ward. I looked into that. You're not gonna hear all these people who have this have this uh, 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 who's made a living off of hating white folks really put the torch to. The behavior of 
black folks, black men. I tell y'all, all our pro- I've been saying this. This ain't nothing new. I've been saying this. All black problems are behavior based. Name me a black problem, and I can I can tie it to a behavior. Name a black problem. I can tie it to a behavior. Your money funny? Black folks, black folks need jobs, Mr. Create something. What do you mean? Can't get a job. It's America. Oh, black folks is living in poverty. They gave you free fucking housing and you pee in the hallway. Look at our neighborhoods they ran down. You tore them up. We got crime violence. You niggas are killing each other. Tell me something that ain't a behavior. And to behave is free. To behave is free. When they was giving out the PPP money, the unforgivable, the, uh, the, the forgivable loans, why 10, 12 brothers ain't get together to go buy a franchise? Now y'all want to complain. But y'all got rims, though. That's behavior. Nipsey died. Behavior of a black man. Dolph died. Behavior of a black man. Black men who did that. What else? What else you got? That's not a behavior of a black man. So this was a black man. Behavior problem. Overzealous, high off authority. Untrained, untamed, pure hatred for his brothers. Everything that them four cops did was behavior. Kicking a man while he's down, that's your behavior. That's symbolic to how black men behave, man. When a nigga going through something, he's down, what niggas do? What do niggas do? Find a way to catapult off of it and put them down even lower. In, in, in every religion, Quran, from Islam, Christianity, whatever, uh, 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 Judaism, Hebrew Israelite, whatever. One common message that they always said that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan always told us. And it's written. It's that you supposed to want for your brother like you want for yourself. Do for your brother like you would do for yourself. Kicking a man while he down was a symbolic, was with symbolism. Watching that tape, that was symbolism of how we perceive each other as black men. Especially when we get some motherfucking power. Some comfortability in this country. We don't put niggas on. We put niggas down. Shitting on you punk ass niggas. Look at my wrist. Shitting on you niggas. That's what we do. Show me the Jew that's shitting on a Jew.
So the Mexican that's trying to shit on the next Mexican, they pull each other up. Four black men, not one of them say, hey man, what the fuck you doing? We got a behavior problem. We don't got. We don't got a. It's 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 not. And I know it's very very easy to just say yes. This is a police brutality problem. Police, 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 police. I get it, man. I get it, man. I get it, man. And I'm gonna hold that L. And I think uh, all as black men, free thinking, straight black men, we gotta hold the L because we 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 are the the uh. uh the elite, the elite thinkers of our community. So either we ain't implementing some real, some real game and knowledge into these young niggas, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's on us, man. If we, we, we either not doing that. Or we just turning our blind eye. We ain't pushing the right message. And you would think, you know, because doing some research on those cops, I believe three of them were in a fraternity. They were uh, they was Omegas. I'm pretty sure, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that Coming from that brotherhood, you're supposed to love your brothers. You know what I'm saying? So, we're going to get to that, Octavius. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. You know? We're going to get to that, man. We're going to get to that. But I thought that they were supposed to love their brothers. I thought that they... When, you know, part of their whole thing was they supposed to be doing for the community. But see, that was a that was that's a slap in the face to their organization too. That's a slap in the face to cops, slap in the face to black cops. So now when people say, "Man, you want to," you know, when you tell if you told somebody you want to be a cop, they're like, "Man, see, this is what I'm talking about." I'm not, I'm gonna be honest, man. I don't even want to go around motherfuckers today because. They know how hardcore I am on black folks' behavior because I know it needs to be correct. They're gonna say, they're gonna say, Jeff, so now what you got to say? I can't say shit. But I'm like, I can't say shit about this, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I can't say a goddamn thing, man. Because they ain't give me a leg to stand on with this shit. They ain't give me they ain't give me a leg to stand on with this shit. You know? These motherfuckers literally just made it harder for anybody who's in that in that field. So now you might have gang members. On, on goon time. You know what I'm saying? And now they might just want to just turn this shit up with any random black cop. That's a damn good job. It's a good paying job. You know what I'm saying? It's a good paying job. It's a risky job. I mean, who risk people going out here risking their lives? You're supposed to have to risk in your life, not taking them. Now, this this is a father. 
He was working. He was working at FedEx. He was a photographer, skateboarder. He wasn't even from Memphis. He's from California. That's why when you hear him talk, talk totally different. He wasn't with none of that gang shit in, in, in Memphis, and you could tell. I'm from Chicago, and Memphis and Chicago are very fucking similar. You could tell. You could definitely tell. He was stopped already. You know, normally, when it's a situation where it's like, okay, if it was a situation where he was running from the police and he stops, they would get out. Police officers would get out, stand by their door, behind their door, and have their guns drawn, if it was that, and tell you, step out the car, put your keys out, all that shit. He was stopped with the turn signal. You know what I'm saying? But you got cops trying to live out their football dreams and just run into the car. You know what I'm saying? Run into the car and snatching you out. You know? So, where is the black man safe? Because, like I tell you, I, I, I don't fear cops. I, uh, I make sure to, to, to make, to make my life as, 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 how can I say this? Try to have the most, the least, amount of cop encounters as possible. Poli have the least amount of police encounters as possible as a black man, because you don't know how shit going to go. Now that black cops just stepped in and said, fuck you niggas too, it's, 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 it's crazy. Especially a, a work, the work for the working class man. For a man to, for a man to actually be working and doing and, and, and being a good citizen. This is some bullshit, man. This is some bullshit. You know? And you know, I'm not saying all cops are good. I ain't saying all people are good. You know? But we as the free thinking straight black men have got to take notice at all our enemies. And our enemies are not, it's really not the skin. It's the way people think. That's why I told you, you're going to probably have to cut off some of your family members. You're going to have to cut off some people you thought that was friends from back in the neighborhood. That thinking is, 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 is the biggest white man that you ever see, motherfucker. You know? You ever watch some of these conscious uh, 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 debates? Conscious debaters? He's supposed to be our br brightest of minds. They kill each other like a rapper, nigga. They go at it like rappers, nigga. So what do we learn from that? That we don't fucking love each other as brothers. And that's why I came up with the 30 code. Because that's the problem. Niggas can't even be in the same room without hating. We, if, are we turning into these broads? Arguing over who got the best purse? Type shit, nigga.
this is crazy, man. Black lives matter, though. Right? I'm not seeing those hashtags. I'm not seeing a, 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 the 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 uh, the the Black Lives Matter movement going crazy right now. No. So that just goes to show you, you need to learn from this. They just only care about that money, man. They're not caring about you as a black man. That's why I told you, unless the movement affects the free thinking straight black man, it doesn't count. It's just talk. It's just old niggas from the 60s who are marching. Pregnant single mother bitches on welfare still hating they still hating on a white daddy who pays their bills. I don't get that. If it's not benefiting the free thinking straight black man, it don't count. Period. The man was a decent dude, man. Rest in peace to Tyree Nichols, man. Real talk. Real talk, man. And like I say, as black men, we speak on this. This was something that this was this was something that was done by us. You know, you know, like this was the type of cat he was, man. Let me see. Uh, I've been here since uh, 10 o'clock, well, 9.45, and the experience has been a very long wait. Uh, it's been very agonizing and very agitating waiting here and let, having everyone go in front of you, appointments, and you're here stuck. So that was my experience. It was a really bad one, actually. I haven't been here in five years, and this is probably the worst time ever. Fam, this ain't no goon. This ain't no goon, man. The way that them police did him, you would thought he was slanging packs, man, and had a 30 shot, man. Just listen to him talk. Now, I got some more reports that I found where they kind of show his lifestyle a little bit. Let me see what I can show you. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Things have Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Getting more in Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what they talking about. But the 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 man worked at FedEx, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man insight into what happened during the arrest of Tyree Nichols. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Hurst. Hi, I'm Stephanie Skurlock. As we wait for the release of video footage to the public, we're hearing the police radio traffic that led to what his family describes as a brutal and heinous takedown of the 29-year-old. We are beginning our team coverage tonight with WRG Shay Arthur. She is live after listening to those calls. And Shay, what did you hear? Hey, Greg. Hey, Stephanie. Well, really, you can hear those tense, those chaotic moments as this really starts to paint a picture as to what happened to Tyree Nichols that night that ultimately led to his death and the firing of five officers. Defense. Now, let me stop there, too. We got to stop saying that no justice, no peace shit. We about to get justice. The cops, the cops got locked up. They just got bailed. They go on the trial, they charge with murder. My only thing is this. The white cop on scene didn't get charged. The white cop on the scene didn't get charged. 
and I'm mad that the uh the EMTs got they about to get fired. See, this is the stupid shit. This is a domino effect. When you do stupid shit like this, other people lose their livelihood. What the EMTs got to do with this shit? They came through, they sustained a the life, get them, get them uh 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 to the hospital. They like, nah, this too bad. We gonna fire everybody. Except for the white cop. Now that 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 that's something you should have a problem with. That's something you should have a problem with. Now, in a lot of these cases, you know. You know Benjamin Crump coming through. He's right there. But this is a justifiable one. A justifiable one. A lot of other shit been a reach. A lot of, lot of other shit been a reach. But this one, this Tyree Nichols, man, this is this was rough, man. A word used by attorneys to describe Tyree Nichols the night of January 7th during his encounter with Memphis police. It was savage. Oh my God. Why? Where was the proportionality that is required in order for those officers to use that type of force? Force, his family's attorneys say, is shown in an independent autopsy, saying he suffered. See, yeah, this, that's not. And, and, and as big as these cops were, y'all couldn't take this one man. Bro, y'all crazy. He is shown in an independent autopsy, saying he suffered extensive bleeding caused by a severe beating and that his observed injuries are consistent with what the family and attorneys witnessed on video of his fatal encounter with police. But until we see the video, new radio traffic from Broadcastify obtained by WREG gives us more insight into the moments surrounding the alleged beating. Memphis police say they initially pulled Nichols over for reckless driving around 8.30 the night of January 7th at East Rains. That's what I, that's what I try to tell y'all all the time too, man. Hold on, let me slow this down. The car is, again, okay, man, I got to let y'all know this, man. In a car, you have the least amount of rights, man. And you have got to sit down with your kids and teach them about how vulnerable you are in a car. You got the least amount of rights in a car. You could be walking down, you could be walking down the street with a loaded gun on you and not get messed with. But if you got a loaded gun in your car, it can turn into a... Most violent situations with the police happen at traffic stops. You have got to understand that you have the least amount of your rights in a car. The car is the worst shit ever. It's the license for to be fucked with. Your driver's license is a license to be fucked with. The license, everything from the license plate to the to the license sticker to the city sticker to insurance. Look at all this shit you gotta have. To a valid driver's license. To not having warrants. To not having marijuana. To not being intoxicated. To, to, have, to not have your pistol uh, uh, visible. To have, make sure that's registered. Look at all the shit you have to do. To drive. To travel. So you have to understand what... All of these things need to be before you jump in that car. All, all of those things need to tail lights. Gotta be right. The windshield. 
You can't even have the little, listen, listen to me. You can't even have the little, the, the little tree, the little scenic tree hanging from your, uh, from your, uh, uh, your, your rear view mirror. They got your seatbelt on. And then you still got to follow the rules of the road. That's like 20 fucking things to not get locked up. That's a lot of fucking rules. You can't text and drive. Now the, think of all, all of the fucking rules that they have for the police to fuck with you in a car. Safer to walk. No loud music. <laughs> like fam, really think about that. Tinted windows. I, I, I guarantee you, man, at least 70% of all drivers got about fuck up on about 10 of those rules every day. Every, every the, the car driving is the fucking worst. Then you profile by what kind of car you got. This all has got to be, you have got to speak to your kids about this shit on what they up against. Too many motherfuckers in the car that found a reason to come fuck with you. You want to decorate your car, put lights on the bottom, they'll say, hey, it's not, that's not allowed in this, in this, in whatever, this fucking community or whatever the hell, this suburb or township. That's a, that's an ordinance violation. Got to park it in the right spot. Look at all the shit you got to do to drive. That's why driving is the most dangerous place for a black man. Driving. Motherfucking car. You go all, you do all that shit for a car just for these motherfuckers to come fuck with you and take it. And don't let them see you hold. Oh, you can't even hold your cell phone and drive. Look at all, look at all. If if you, that's probably about 40 tickets you can write for a motherfucker in a car, man. You got babies. Oh, that baby is, uh, it, it, it's, uh, from all up to six years old. They got to be in the baby seat. I'll pull you over. That baby's not a baby seat. Your car, your, your car uh, exhaust is fucked up. It's blowing out motherfucking smoke. Pulling you over. Now look at what you up against when you jump in the car. You can't even remember all that shit. You can't even remember all that shit. The car is the easiest way for them to put some cuffs on you, man. So when you're knowing that, you're going to move different. Now, I'm not saying Tyree did anything wrong. No, he did nothing wrong. He didn't do nothing wrong. 
But I'm just letting you know what you're up against. And I want y'all to teach your kids how to deal with the cops, man. Just get down, man. Just comply. Just get the fuck down. Just, hey. We fight it in the courtroom. We can't give them reasons either, man. We cannot give these niggas reasons, man. I'm just speaking in general, not this topic. He ain't give them no reason. But yeah, man. Look at all the shit you got to have, man. They can railroad you for a car, man. Fucking car. Ross Rhodes. His family says he was on his way home. Does this look like a gangster? So they can take that narrative off the off the table now. The initial stop less than half a mile from his house. Keep in mind, this radio traffic only captures portions of what officers communicate with dispatch. You know, the Scorpion car pulled over to East Ranger Rose. We have one running on foot. An officer asks for a perimeter to be set up. Run that, run that tag and see what the address is. Officers realize Nichols. So they gonna run the tag, go to the Now, talking to my OG today, shout out to uh, Big Sam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they went to his mama house and said he got caught for drunk drive. She like, she want to come get him because he's like, no, nah, I can't go see him. He's going to, he in the hospital. And when he get out, he go, uh, he, he going to jail. Now, what I'm hearing is, that this is, you know, I, I haven't got confirmation, but what a lot of people are saying is that he was, he was smashing one of their old ladies. One of them guys, old ladies or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I guess it was a cop or whatever. It kind of makes sense now. You got an out of town nigga with a surfer boy uh, uh, dialect to him. California surfer boy type shit. And you ain't feeling that shit. You from Memphis. You, you know, he didn't came from out of town and just took your chick or whatever. And now you want to, you just want to fuck them up because you can. That's another thing. You know? That's another thing. Lives close by. It sounds as if some kind of chase has started. <laughs> At, e at Ross and Castlegate Lane, he's fighting at this time. What happens over the course of the interactions and confrontations, as described by police, is sparsely documented on the radio. Okay, so was deployed as well. I heard this police. Uh, we need y'all to come to East Range and Ross. We have officers on scene. They uh, spray the person. But there are moments of screaming and heavy breathing. The Castlegate is very creepy. I'm 55, just made the scene over here with me. If you're able to bring the suspect over here. Hey, twenty nine thirty three, we got him cuss. Nichols's family says he ran because he was terrified for his life and said on the video he calls for his mother. Two Memphis firefighters are also relieved of duty while this investigation is underway. That's bogus. You done got a whole different you done got a whole different branch. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's working for the municipal. You got them in trouble with your bullshit. See, niggas do it to themselves, man. Niggas doing it to themselves, man. You know? Niggas doing it to themselves, man. This shit just getting out of hand, bro. You know, hold on one second. Let me see. Meetings every. Let me see. Let me see.
Good evening, America. So tonight, we begin in Memphis with the disturbing footage of five black police officers beating Tyree Nichols to death. But before he was a victim, Tyree was a father. Tyree loved skateboarding. He was an artist, a photographer, who loved capturing the sunset. His mother said he was on his way home from taking pictures of the sky on the night of January the 7th. He called for his mother just hours later. Watch out, watch out. Man, listen, man, when you get sprayed with that shit in your fucking eyes, man, it's... Bro, how the hell you can take commands and shit like dog? The first thing you're going to do is go for your face and your eyes. Like, what is the threat? It's five of y'all with this one nigga. It didn't take all that, man. It didn't take all that, man. You didn't tase them, did all this, and you still can't put cuffs on them? Like what, like man, this is what, this is what all these whole teppers and all this say that white folks do to us. No, nigga, that's why I tell you, nigga, the Bloods and the Crips didn't kill more black folks than motherfucking police did. The GDs, the BDs, the Stones, the Vice Lords, Latin Kings, they didn't kill more niggas than the fucking police did. Black folks be doing shit to each other. And the moment we get a chance to do it, niggas want to do it. I, 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 and like I said, I, I fuck with you, Rob. The comply or die, I definitely, but it's very hard to comply when your, your fucking eyes, like certain things, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't, like I gotta say, man, I can't justify the police at all on this. At all. There's no, no, nothing he could have done. He's just trying to survive at this point. So according to one friend, the 29-year-old wanted to be a police officer himself. Now I've been That fucked me up. That fucked me up. The fact that he wanted to be a cop his damn self. Do you realize that the impact of what these four niggas did is going to do to communities. Chicago already got a problem with, with, with keeping cops and even recruiting cops. Could you imagine now? Nobody's going to want to be cop. Yeah. Church, 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 check in. Listen, if you like this exclusive content, make sure you go over to Patreon, become a member, and you're gonna have unlimited access to all my banned from YouTube content, banned from the public. People cannot take this heat. We dropping straight heat, straight fire. You know how we do. Follow me on all social media platforms. The link is in the description. Again, join the Patreon. It's starting as low as $5. Join. Peace.